welcome back to another video guys, Droids and Bricks here, and today in front of me, I have something that I think is very, very exciting. Now typically in life you have two good things, in this case that would be, you have Legos, and then you have a vacuum. Legos are a good thing because you can create literally whatever you want with them. Like, literally anything, assuming you have the correct pieces. And a vacuum is a good thing because you can easily clean up a mess of a bunch of tiny items that would otherwise be harder to sweep up or impossible to clean up on a carpet floor. However, you try to combine those two good things together, typically the results don't end up very well with how small Legos are. However, you combine the two things the right way and you've got an amazing creation called the Lego Vacuum Engine. Now, if you've been following around in the small Lego community for any amount of time recently, you may have noticed a trend of people trying out Lego Vacuum Engines. What I have here is my attempt at the world's fastest Lego vacuum engine. I'm going to show you how you can build your own. Now, of course, when running a Lego vacuum engine, not only do you need an engine, but you also need a reliable, powerful vacuum. In my case, I'm going to be using a Dyson Ball DC41 animal. Should provide enough power to power the engine. You can use whatever vacuum you want, however, for a similar result, I would suggest going with the Dyson Ball Animal. Now, first things first, you need to connect the vacuum to the engine. And in order to do that, if you have a Dyson Ball, you're going to need this attachment here. This is what's called a crevice tool, and it has a brush on it. You want to just pull off this brush, and in its place, place one of these medium-sized Lego balloon tires. This is so that the vacuum can get a good seal against the flange on the engine. Now for the vacuum itself, you're going to find this long red piece on the hose. You're going to want to pull it out all the way, press this red button, and then pull it out even farther. Don't worry, this piece can go back in. Now knock down the hose and attach your modified crevice tool where the extension used to be, making sure the tabs line up and pressing the button while sliding it down. You're going to want to raise up the vacuum hose a bit and place something underneath the base of it so that it actually stays up on its own. This is so that the seal is consistent. Don't worry about it being perfect. Once the vacuum is turned on, it'll seal all the way. You'll want to attach the cord to a power outlet. With a little bit of movie magic, now all the pieces are laid out in front of me. At this point, you should pause the video so you can go gather or buy all the pieces you need. Now, please keep in mind, you probably won't be needing these two circle pieces. I need them because the axle hole broke on my big 40 tooth gear. Now, let's build!
Now that you've built all these sub-assemblies, you can start building the engine now. First, you take this part of the block, you take your valve, and place the valve in the middle hole, making sure the valve is right side up. Take your piston, take this part of the block, do the same thing. Make sure the piston is at top dead center, and put the valve 90 degrees to the right. Attach one of these spacers to the crankshaft, and then attach the two together. Place these on the block. Make sure the piston is upright. Attach this part right here. Using your fingers and a lot of patience, put the final spacer in between the crankshaft and the flywheel. Attach this piece and this piece, and make sure it spins freely. If it doesn't spin freely, make sure to loosen up the connections. Now attach these two pieces here and here. This to make this part of the engine more sturdy. Take your cylinder and place it over the piston and the valve, making sure each go in their respective hole. Take your throttle, making sure these two tiles are facing towards the valve, and just throw it on. 